people seem to forget if you change today today will change your life three two one and we are live welcome to episode 69 of the self-belief chief podcast you're here with life and performance coach david holman and what i wanted to bring you in today's session is in all walks of life we have to sell and some of you may be thinking well, hang on no no I, I don't sell that's not what i do no we are all having to be salesmen every salesmen and women every single day selling people on who you are selling yourself as a partner selling your business selling your product or program selling yourself as a parent whatever it might be we're trying to convey an impression to someone else that we can add value that we can be of service that we can actually provide something extra to what they have and extra to their life and sometimes it's very difficult to do that and i wanted to talk specifically about one particular point and this is in and around actual sales so if you're for example a coach consultant personal trainer or whatever and you're trying to bring people into your business this is going to be something very useful for you Okay, we're going to talk about objection handling, or what I call the pre-objection painkiller. And I'm going to explain it in more detail, but it's something that really helps me with bringing clients myself and helping clients recognize and realize actually the service I provide and actually the huge value I can bring. Because there's, there's no doubt once you know clients are in the program that they like what I do. It's always a question of can I explain to them or can I explain to the right people exactly what it is that I do and actually how I can help them it's difficult to always convey that message but there's something we can do and many of you will have heard about the six sources of self-belief this is a model I created around helping people understand their self-belief but also how to build confidence in any area of your life as well and the first source is clarity the clearer you are of what you want the closer it comes to you and building clarity when it comes to sales and sales calls and sales in your business is very much about preparation. Now you might be thinking, well actually I'm, I'm having to respond to the objections that the person says. That, that is true, but there's a hell of a lot of preparation that you could be doing that you might not be doing that would make all the difference. So let me explain it in a bit more detail. So, here's what I mean. I call it the pre-objection painkiller. Basically what we want to do is we want to deal with objections before they arise. Before a sales call or whatever products you have bringing in clients or business or whatever, if you've got a video or marketing material or whatever, it should address the objections, the typical objections that your ideal customer has. If you deal with them before they bring, them, bring it up themselves, they're less likely to bring it up in the future. If it's around money, if it's oh I need to I need to think about it, or I need to ask her, uh, you know I need to ask my spouse. Whatever the objection might be, I want you to have already dealt with those objections, or have already have answers to those objections. Now, if you're speaking to someone on the phone for the first time about you know doing business with them, you have an opportunity at that point to, to introduce those you know those potential objections along the way because the more objections that there are at the end the bigger the swell of doubt at the end the harder it is to overcome that you want to reduce that swelling or the swell so it's minimal so it's minimal and so that we're going to be able to overcome and get through it so this is what i want you to do this is why i call it the pre-objection painkiller right the idea is that we have a product or service that we know can help our ideal customer. Okay, it's got to be a good product, obviously, but we know it can help our ideal customer. And so, in helping our ideal customer, I want you to see it as they have a cold, and we want to get them to come out of the house to see how bright and sunny it is. Okay, they've got a cold, we want to get them outside so they can see it's bright and sunny. What we want to do along the way we should call it pre-objection painkillers, pre-objection painkillers, is we want to give them, you know, uh, paracetamol, anti-inflammatories, whatever it might be, 
in order to make them feel a bit better and a bit better and a bit better. So by the time we ask them, hey, do you want to come outside and see how bright and sunny it is? They already feel a bit better. Does that make sense? So if they're still feeling like shit and they're really down and their cold is awful, and we try and ask them the question, do you want to come outside and see how sunny it is? What's the likelihood they're going to? Zero. But if we say, you know, oh, actually, well, here's this thing that, you know, gets rid of your blocked nose. And here's this thing that gets rid of your headache. And I know you're worried about your sore throat. And actually, this is how I help people deal with a sore throat. And they get rid of all of these things. By the time you ask them and, they, you know, they've they've actually sort of they've heard the, um, you know, how you've dealt with that particular objection before they brought it up. They can embrace it. They can think about it. They can digest it and they've digested it. And the body has taken it all in. That the body is now responding to that stuff. They're now listening and they're now responding to what you have to say. Because you're making little things that are constantly making them feel a bit better and a bit better and a bit better. So they'll keep listening. So by the time you do say to them, do you want to come outside and see how sunny it is? They'll go, you know what? Yeah, I do actually. Because you've helped me, you've helped me, you've helped me. I feel better. And when I feel better, I'm more likely to do it. Now, here's the here's the very important point. There is a balance with sales. And one of the things is you do have to you have to get them to truly articulate how difficult their situation is. Get them to tell you the truth of how bad it is at certain points. Don't put the words in their mouth, but ask them questions. So they really relay to you how bad their situational problem is. And then you go, OK, well, I've got the solution. But here's the thing we don't want to do. On a sales call, we don't want to say it's okay. You know, they tell you your pain, their pain points. It's okay. It'll be fine. You know, or give them little hints or tips or tricks or whatever that make them feel better. Because it's a balance. We want them to, one, recognize their pain, but we want them to recognize that they can change, but they need our help to change, which is the reality. We don't want to go too far. The other side where we, they, they, need to change and they believe so much in the conversation that they feel now they can do it on their own which reality is they can't so we we want them to be able to believe that they can change but we don't want them to believe that it's just them on their own that could do it because otherwise they would have solved it already and people can get caught up in terms of oh i had a good conversation and then the next day it goes back to normal because there's no such thing as quick fixes that's what a lot of people are looking for. And you have to, that might be an, an objection you address early. You know, I don't do quick fixes. You know, I address problems. I address them head on. I take my time with it because, you know, if you want to change long-term behavior, it, it requires long-term planning. It re- requires long-term coaching. It re- requires long-term resources, whatever it might be. And so that's an important thing to, to consider and to bring up and talk about in amongst all of this stuff. Very important. So whatever, you know, you need to do your research before calls into your client, but research also into what are the common things that prevent people from taking action or taking necessary action to go and get the result that they want, to go and get the help that they need. Everyone has a pain threshold and everyone has an action threshold. And what that means is the point where you know, we want them to raise the pain in their own mind to the, you know, when it really is bad for them at points for, you know, the reason they, they want us to work with in the first place is because, of course, at points it is difficult, it is bad. We want them to feel that pain threshold in that moment. So we want to raise the pain threshold. But people, different people have a, a higher or lower action threshold in terms of taking action, in terms of willing to trust someone and to, to use the service to get help. Everyone has a slightly different action threshold. And so we want to lower, or so we want to so, say the resistance to taking action, we want to lower the resistance. Okay, And all of that can be done by a pre-objection painkiller. You bring them up before they are brought up. If you bring them up before they are brought up, the swell will go down, they'll start to feel better, and they'll be willing to see that bright sunny day outside. And you know what? I've talked about this in terms of business context, but this is true in all areas of life. If we can, if we already know up front what's hurting someone, know up front what's stopping them from moving forward or taking action, we can become so much more valuable in people's lives. 
and make a huge difference to them as well. So I want you to consider that. Try and think in other people's heads, how can I help them before they ask for help? This has been David Holman. If you change today, today will change your life. So enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your life wherever you are. And I'll speak to you again soon.